Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. Accidental Black Speech, written by Nettle Queen. Yulo glanced out the viewport at the pleasant curves of the diplomatic vessel that carried the ambassador of the recently contacted species. With a thought flick, she activated the screen wall and brought up the data about these humans. Their people's biology was compatible enough that they could meet in person. She would need supplemental oxygen, but it was simple enough to carry some. And their psychology seemed compatible as well. Humans put an emphasis on the story where Ularians leaned more towards overviews. But when some complementary personalities collaborated, the poetry and fiction they had already emerged from the limited bandwidth chats of the FTL com exchanges promised a social revolution of the most pleasant kind. Her eyes tracked over the basic line, drawing that sketch the male and female variants. They were almost amusingly long-legged. Their back limbs made up almost half of their modest height, though everything else was more or less average. Bilateral symmetry, internal support structure, digestive and reproduction. Two specialized manipulator limbs, comically small when compared to their legs. Usually, broad-colored vision balanced by lack of thermal and polarized vision, hearing, touch, taste, smell all within standard deviations. Though their sense of proprioception and environmental awareness was nearly as good as hers, a gift of their tree-dwelling ancestors. She flipped to an anatomical cutaway out of idle curiosity. Their breathing and eating shared a single tube to a degree, and she wondered how they weren't constantly fishing food out of their lungs. If she ever got into a conversation with a mythic literalist, Right there was plenty of proof that either the creators were bad at design or non-existent as far as she was concerned. Giving herself a shake, she brought her mind back to the business and flicked to the cultural and psychological section. Her human contemporary was from the relatively warm and very dry climate, a member of one of the larger cultural families that was from a place called Middle East, the name of which made her laugh. East of what? She shook her head at that a little bit of in linguistic slaveness. Globes didn't exactly have edges to be east of, and their world didn't have a supercontinent. It was good to see that kind of holdover from pre-technology societies. It implied a thread of tradition and stable culture that was sadly rare in the galaxy. People were too eager to throw away the old before asking if the new was substantially better. Though she flicked to the historical timeline and granted, Maybe a little too stable. It had taken them half again the average amount of time from the first powered flight to get a permanent settlement off planet and figure out the skip drive. Ah oh well. Their history was rich and interesting and shockingly well documented if the size of the subfolder has anything to go by. And her classmates who focused on archaeology and sociology had nearly fainted with joy when they got their hands on that data. She flicked a game and reviewed the gestures that were used to start a polite meeting, starting with inclining her upper body with her hands clasped in front of her and going on to how her ears could be used to assist in communication where her face could not, as well as the facial expressions that she would need to understand. The translation of traditional greetings in his culture had been a pleasant surprise. Peace be on you was a lovely way to start relating with someone as far as she was concerned and she was hopeful that it was a sign of things to come. The whistle of her alarm brought her back to the real world, and she shook her tail to fluff it back up. It wouldn't do to greet a new people with bed fur. She put on her beaded skull cap and vest, gave her cheeks a quick brush, and settled her supplemental oxygen tube in place, tucking it discreetly against her neck and behind her nose fringe. A sharp tap against the door made her jump, and she greeted her colleague with an annoyed buff. You couldn't be a little less jarring. I don't need to be on an adrenaline rush. Uro's ears went back and he tossed his head apologetically. His freshly polished horn sparkling even in the artificial light. Sorry, I wanted to be sure you heard me. The human ambassador is arriving in ten decker beats, and I wanted to make sure that we all had time to prepare. The whole team, I mean. Yes, yes, I'm ready to go. Yulu patted the small bag with the oxygen canister meaningfully, and Ural nodded. Once everyone was together, they went over the slides of different human expressions, both linguistic and facial, 
and quickly refresh their memories on the points of human psychology that have given everyone the most trouble. Thanks to a rare's excellent scheduling, everything wrapped up a full decabeat before the human ambassador arrived, and the diplomatic team seemed in good spirits as they strolled to the greeting room. Almost as soon as the door closed, Yulo's hand twitched upwards before she brought it under control. Nervous grooming was not the way to greet a new ambassador. Exhale, hold. Inhale, hold. Exhale. The old exercises taught to everyone who went into social fear calmed her enough that the normal but currently unwelcome Ularian stress response was controllable. The air exchange began and everyone turned on their oxygen. With a soft word, the door to the human delegation opened, and they laid eyes on each other for the first time. She presumed that a man in front of her was the opposite number and studied him closely. She knew his name was Omar, but nothing else. He had a neatly trimmed black and grey fringe under his jaw rather than his nose, and his bare skin was a medium brown, though only his face and hands were bare. His head was covered in a skull cap with white twisted cloth and the rest covered in flowing tube of pale fabric that went to the floor, and a long dark vest over that. She blinked, then saw that his arms were sheathed separately as he brought his hands towards his ears in the Ularian gesture of welcome. An excellent start, she thought, as she bowed in the human style. Peace be on you, she said, pausing to let the translator VI work its magic. The words were, of course, unintelligible, not that she was paying attention to the sounds when she had the person try to read, but the man's mouth curved upwards in an easily recognizable expression of pleasure. Hand on to you, peace. May you feel the sun. His voice came through the VI as a middle tone masculine. And may you feel not the rain, she replied, completing the formal Lyrian greeting. This was going splendidly. She felt someone rapidly flicking her tail and glanced behind her. Hurrah gave her a look that she hadn't seen since the attempted to kidnap and eat their team, and when she glanced at the other five, she saw that everyone else was wearing similar expressions. Bewildered, she glanced at the group of humans across the room. They were all making no aggressive moves, only exchanging looks and subtle gestures amongst themselves. She flicked her tail decisively, silently telling everyone to keep their concerns until later. There was no immediate danger, and they could wait until the greeting was over to discuss any issues. The man's eye tufts descended slightly, and then she heard it, interwoven with the gentle rise and fall of speech were cracks and hisses that sent instinctive jolts of fear down her tail. She barely collected her thoughts quickly enough to catch the VI translation. Is there something wrong? It wasn't her proudest moment, but she froze. How can a living creature make noises like that? A few tens of moments too late, she pulled herself together. No, there is nothing wrong, though, uh... Her eyes searched his for a moment, though what he was looking for, she could not say. I'm very sorry, but there is no polite way to phrase this, though I truly mean no offense. Your language is unsettling to Ularian. As the translated words scored across the ears like knives, Uro's nerves broke and he slowly edged backwards towards the door. Omar seemed to rock backwards in, surprise perhaps, and his eyes darted from side to side. When he opened his mouth, she braced herself. I'm sorry for your pain, he said, more quietly than before. She appreciated the attempt, but it didn't help much. What can I do? If you are going to steal one dragon egg, you might as well try for ten. Sounds of cracking and hissing are grating and make us instinctively afraid. How their words in your language do, do not use them? No. She tilted her head in confusion. La was a perfectly normal sounding word. That was, oh. She interrupted herself mid-word. You mean that not enough words to be useful? Yes. Nam. A weird but harmless word. Well, at least they could communicate to a degree, even if it was one-sided. One of the humans coughed and said something too quietly for the microphone to pick up, which resulted in a flurry of discussion before another one of the group stepped up. This one dressed in a similar way to the man, but without a wrapped cloth skullcap. Yulo suspected this one was female based on her narrow jaw and lack of fringe. Her voice came through as middle high feminine, and the words she spoke were nearly oddly buzzy rather than torturous. Is this better? Yes, thank you. Yulo's ears and tail flicked and swirled in gladness that the mission wasn't a complete failure. To the United Nations Diplomatic Corps. From First Contact Team. Subject, First Meeting, Ularian Nations. Attachment, 
Hularian fear response and suggested remedies. Body. The first contact meeting was a success, though that success was largely due to the graciousness of both the Ularian diplomats and Ambassador Omar's and diplomat Fatima's tactful handling. The Ularians have a response to voiceless fricatives that mirrors that of the human response to nails on a chalkboard, though it seems somewhat stronger. Thanks to Fatima's ability to speak basic Mandarin, the rough start was smoothed over and continual relations established. It is strongly suggested that any diplomat or ambassador to the Ularians be a fluent speaker of a language that uses the sounds K, S, K, Ch, F, and T seldomly, or not at all, provided such a language exists or can be constructed. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.